Hello, Fairfield Junior Senior High School. Mr. Jones and I are going to uh, present a little uh, slideshow here about what to expect from students during this distance learning time that we're going to have. This is not going to be like the spring, guys. In the spring, if you remember, we had distance learning um, on Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, and then Thursday and Friday were kind of off days. And as we started the school year, uh, we we have the in-person, which is in-person Monday through Thursday, and then Friday was a distance learning day. Well, this is not going to be the same as the spring and is not going to be the same as we've started off in the fall. The expectations for attendance and work completion are going to change. They have changed a little bit for these next couple of weeks. Uh, you need to be able to follow the schedule for your class at Zoom or your Google Meets, and you need to complete all the work that you get on time on those days. You get all that work done, and you need to turn it in every day, Monday through Friday. So if you're getting something assigned on that Monday and the teacher wants it on that day, you've got to be turning it in. It's just like if you're sitting in the school, in the classroom, handing that piece of paper in or pushing that send button so that they can have it in Google on Google Meet or their Google Classroom so that they can see it and grade it and work on it, okay? Um, you've got to be able to contact your teachers and your school counselor if you need any assistance. And we are here to help you as we navigate through this distance learning time because we will be in it for the next two weeks all the way through the end of the first semester. Okay, so while you're home for the next couple of weeks doing the distance learning uh, and getting ready to go to finish it out, you need to establish some routines and here are some expectations for that. The school day is going to start at 8 o'clock, and that's Monday through Friday every time, okay? So you need to be getting ready to go. You need to get up and be ready to go. You need to get dressed, just like if you were coming to school and you need to eat some breakfast prior to getting class started. Um, I don't think we want you eating breakfast while you're sitting there on your first uh, Google Meet or your uh, Zoom meeting. So make sure you are ready to go, just like if you were coming to school. Um, sitting there in some really comfortable clothes or pajamas probably isn't going to get you focused or get you in the mindset of I'm at school. So getting up and just getting ready to go like you normally would is going to be very helpful. And school is starting at 8, so be ready to go. Uh, you will follow your school schedule for classes. We're going to hold on to that blue gold day rotation. The first day that you are starting up on Monday, December the 7th, it's going to be a gold day, so you've got to be ready to go for your first period class that morning at 8 o'clock. Check with your teachers for the exact times, meeting times. Your teacher should be getting that out to you so that you know exactly when you're going to be meeting from day to day on the gold day or blue day. And just for example, if your first period class is Algebra 1 and that meets at 8 o'clock, that means your third period class could be in English 9 and that's going to meet at 9.15. So you have to know those times so that you can log in, get on the Zoom, and be ready to go. Um, during the day, there will be a spot where you'll have an opportunity to eat lunch. We're not going to split up the lunch times like we do here at school. So make sure you're taking time. And, and when you have a gap in some of your classes, take that time to eat your lunch and be ready to go. Drink some water, get something to drink, and just be ready to finish out the day. Really important is to make sure you're keeping that regular bedtime. Pretend this is like you are coming to school every single day, even though you're going to be probably staying at home doing this. Keep your regular bedtime. Don't stay up late. If you're staying up late, that could just make you tired as you're sitting there during the class time. Staying up late looks different and can have negative effects on your academic success. So it's just it's not going to be a good idea to be going to bed at midnight, one or two in the morning because you're doing something else. You've got to be ready to go when that class starts and that Zoom class starts so that you can continue on the day. Okay, you want to choose a good place to learn. Pick a regular place that you sit and hang out at every single day. Um, laying in bed is probably not going to be your best option for doing distance learning. Find a table, get a desk, sit in a real chair, and find a place that you can do that. And concentrate. So choose a quiet place where you can concentrate. Um, do anything you can to maybe avoid those extra distractions so that you can be working on the work and be concentrating on the class that you're in and doing the work that you're supposed to be doing. If you have, if there's multiple students in your house that are also going to be doing Zoom or any sort of video meeting, try to get into a different room, put on some headphones, anything that you think might help to reduce the distractions. But just try to find a good spot where you can learn. Sit at a real desk, sit at a chair, 
keep your posture and you'll be ready to go from class to class. As far as attendance goes, um, your attendance is going to be determined by your participation in each class period, Zoom or Google Meet. Um, so that's why it's important that you're in those meetings, the Zoom or Google Meet, uh, at your scheduled time. Uh, your access codes or information about that time should have been shared with you. Uh, it could also be in your Google Classroom for each one of your classes. If for some reason, uh, you know, technical glitch or something else happens um, and you're not able to access the Zoom or Google Meet, you must immediately contact your teacher. And that could be through email or by phone. Um, and, and here's the school's phone number, you know, provided for you. Um, you know, let them know it as soon as you can. Um, th that's a, a good way to kind of say, hey, I'm not just trying to skip your class. Um, I'm, I'm here. I just had an issue. Um, it is important that you do that. Make sure you're staying in contact. As far as exams, um, you know, we're two and a half weeks away from the end of the semester. Uh, we are still having exams for all high school credit classes. Um, each teacher is going to communicate through Google Classroom uh, information about the exams for their classes uh, and what they're going to look like. Um, it is important to remember they are still worth 20% of your semester grade. So be prepared to give your best effort. Um, please pay attention to Google Classroom's virtual exam schedule. Um, we're going to put that out in the next few days to kind of let us know what exams should fall, fall on what day and what time period. Um, as far as uh, teachers giving exams, we still want to try to keep it to a schedule similar to what we would do if we were in person. As far as students involved in extracurriculars, um, sports, you know, it could be show choir, um, all those different extracurricular after school events. Um, it's important to remember, you've got to maintain your academic eligibility to participate. Uh, so it's going to be important you stay on top of your schoolwork. Um, you're communicating with your teachers if you need extra, extra help or coming in to, you know, to possibly get that help. Um, but it is important to maintain that academic eligibility. Those requirements have not changed. Uh, also, there is a requirement for your um, eligibility to um, participate is based off your attendance. Um, so it is required that you are in attendance for all of your classes to be able to participate in your event, uh, either a practice or that extracurricular event. Um, these aren't just school expectations or requirements. These are also um, mandated by the IHSA. So it is extremely important that we do that because um, you may risk missing out on a practice or event. Okay, so really important, you need to be able to stay in touch with us. Okay, if you're struggling in any way, shape or form, you, you've got to stay in touch. and some of the ways you can do that is make sure you're checking all the communication that you get from the school. It's not going to come every day, but there could be something important that comes out. So make sure you're checking your email. Make sure that you're looking at the daily bulletin that gets put out by Ms. Dunlap. And make sure you're checking your Google Classroom daily because your teachers might be putting posting some comments up or reminders up on those boards. So make sure you're looking at all those things because you never know when you might get some additional information regarding school or anything else. So make sure you're keeping up on that. If you're absolutely having any issue, I think we've said it a couple times already, you've got to reach out to us if you have any questions or if you need any kind of assistance whatsoever. Um, best way to get questions answered, of course, if it's in the classroom, you contact your classroom teacher first. They're the experts in what you're doing. So calling me or calling Mr. Jones or calling Mr. Grassy is okay, but if you're having trouble with English, call your English teacher. If you're having trouble in math, call your math teacher. They're going to be the first ones or contact them. You don't just have to call them, but contact them, email them, reach out to them, uh, something so that they know you're having an issue and they can try to help you with that. Um, also, if you need more help or you need any kind of help at all, you can also try contacting your school counselor. So Mr. Treesh and Ms. Johnson and Ms. Gingrich, they'll be able to help you as well. So give them a call or shoot them an email so that we can figure out what's going on and try to help you on top of that. We're all here to help and we can all help you. Um, but just know some of some people have more specific uh, skills and different skills and so that they can help you with certain things. But just stay in touch, check your emails, check everything else so that you're ready to go. OK, it's important these last two and a half weeks that we finish the semester strong. Um, complete all your work and get it turned in all the time. OK, seniors, you got to keep your eyes on the prize. OK, graduation is really just a few short months away, you know you got to ask yourself the question, are you doing what it takes to be successful? Um, it's okay to, to reach out if you need help. It, it, get the help you need. Do not take your eyes off that prize. Check with your teachers to find out when all the work for your classes do. Um, don't procrastinate. You know, you don't want to wait till the last minute because things happen. You, you are responsible for getting that work completed and turned in on time. 
I know the transition to uh, virtual learning can be difficult, but I think if you follow these expectations and you do the things that, that you know you can do, um, you can finish this semester strong and um, we can look to, to be back in person in the second semester.